Hello, and welcome to the Sai and Kayla Variety Hour. I'm Kayla. I'm Sai. And uh, today we're going to get right into it. Um, we have uh, a few things to discuss. We're going to do a little Let's All Go to the Lobby and talk about um, some gaming. We haven't really decided on a name for our gaming segment, or maybe we did and we already forgot. I, I don't really know. Yeah, we, we didn't bother to check last <laughs> time what we came up with. I, I rewatched the episode quite a few times, but uh, I'm a little... I can't watch it that many times over, you know what I mean? It's like, a great episode, I don't blame you. I mean, it's so good. No, I'm just <laughs> Tell your friends. Tell your friends, please. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, just a little uh, personal update, just a little life tidbit. Um, yesterday morning, um, I woke up to the sweet, sweet sounds of Cyrus saying, Babe, I cut my finger and I can't get it to stop bleeding. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a uh, boy howdy. What a day it was yesterday. It was a lot. I I woke up, showered, and then we're just getting ready for the day. The first thing I got to do is feed our dog. Um, he has been having a little bit of dry skin recently, yeah. so we're feeding him some sardines to help with that. So I find the sardines and you know go to open it. It's jammed, like it's not opening properly. So I just keep tugging and tugging and tugging, and then bam. Uh, it comes up and just slices my thumb, like, pretty cleanly and pretty deeply. Yeah. If I, so, it's funny, because, like, I'm trying to, I, I cut my thumb, and I go to the bathroom, uh, to try and clean that up, but my goodness, like, so much blood in our hallway and in that bathroom, you would think there was it a was, murder. It looked like a murder scene. It took me a minute to clean up afterwards. Yeah. It was, like... It was pretty intense. Oh, man. It was something else. So we, uh, Michaela, being a super awesome wife, uh, ran out, tried to go to a CVS to get uh, some bleed stopper. But they were closed. Yeah, this CVS was hour closed. CVS. Walmart didn't have it. Walgreens was closed. It was kind of a nightmare because he was like, it was, I don't want to get graphic here, but it was really going. And yeah. by looking at it, I thought it was relatively shallow and I had, this is like the third or fourth, like, really deep finger cut I've been, like, involved in caring for. Like, I don't know why that keeps happening to me. I was working in a, a desk job, and somebody came up to me with, like, a sliced open finger and was like, where's the first aid kit? Like, I've been there several, several times. So I knew that I could use some bleed stopper to get it to clot, but it was just a no-go from there. Yeah. Um, so coming back home after all that... Uh, I come in and it's still going, but I check it out again and I realize, oh no, it's, I kind of, you know, look at it, inspect it, and um, I realize it's much deeper than I initially thought um, before, so Bleed Stopper wasn't going to cut it even if I did find it. Yeah, that was, I'm like waiting at home and I'm pretty certain you were gone for like 10 minutes and then you're like, no, I've been gone like an hour. That was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> Jumping forward a bit. We go to the um, urgent care, and he's mm -hmm. like, the guy's like, how long ago did this happen? And he's like, I don't know, like 20 minutes? I'm like, it's been like an hour and a half. And the doctor <laughs> is minute. just like, wow. <laughs> yeah. And uh, <laughs> He also sounded like he had cotton balls in his mouth. I could not understand that doctor for the life of me. No, yeah, I could not either. Yeah. My goodness. But anyway, um, so I'm squishing around <laughs> Cyrus's finger, and he looks at me and goes, I think I'm about to faint. <laughs> and I was like, I looked at him. He's white as a sheet. I push him onto the bed. And then he's like, oh, now I'm going to throw up. And I, we've been married for five years. I've known him for seven and a half, mm -hmm. almost eight years. Mm -hmm. Never once have you thrown up in that time. Fainted. Done, and really, you've seen me do all of that hundreds of times over. <laughs> yeah. But definitely. never once has that been on the... No. No, yeah. definitely not. So, uh, yeah, that happened. It was, it was pretty shocking. And uh, we went to the urgent care where... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, where I basically, uh, you know, the doctor finally saw us, saw me and everything, gave me a tetanus shot, uh, decided that after I related, especially my wooziness, he was just like, hey, um, so I would recommend stitches, but I just don't want you to faint on me right now, so I'm just going to give you glue instead. I'm like, cool, that sounds great. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, that was uh, that was basically why we were 
all busy yesterday and thus are podcasting today rather than yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> just the emotional uh, stress of it yeah. all. I, I needed a day. Just yeah, to he figure slept things for out. a couple hours yesterday afterwards. Um, yeah, so finally recovered, and his his thumb is still unfortunately bleeding. Um, it looks <laughs> gnarly as heck. They put so many bandages around it, but it's not containing. Yeah, all of that. So you don't need a thumb to podcast, though. So that's good. Yeah, I, maybe I'll just be in charge of the the board, the yeah. soundboard. You want to hit your hit a hit a thingy? This is my favorite. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're in charge of the board now. <laughs> I could, but um, you know, I'm thumb. on my union mandated break because yeah. of this thumb. Uh, yeah. So we've got some movies to talk about. Uh, got a little bit of gaming to talk about, and that's basically. Should we just get into this movie section? Yeah. You wanna bring Let's, us in? Yep. Uh, just so no one comes down on us with any copyright claims. This is a remix, so just bear that in Can mind, please. It? Yeah. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the you know, lobby. Yeah, it's what you gotta do. To get ourselves a treat. Yeah, uh, I think that perfectly brings us into our Let's All Go to the Lobby segment. Um, we're gonna talk first about Glass Onion, um, the sequel to Knives Out. We are going to do our darndest to not give spoilers. We're just going to talk about the film as a film and try to not be too plot heavy is our goal here. Because it has a very limited release. It's a Netflix movie and it will be coming to Netflix in December. Uh, but they did a, a limited run in theaters for about a week and we were able to squeeze in and get to see it, which was pretty pretty cool. Yeah, that was awesome. It, of course, came out uh, on Thanksgiving uh, week and weekend. So we attempted to go see it one night, uh, but we got to the theater, we looked at the seating, and the only seats left were like the two closest to the screen and off to the left. And in order to save our necks mm -hmm. from being kinked for watching this movie, we're like, let's just do it another day. So we were able to order some tickets uh, later. And yeah, uh, like before we get into any of it, just what were your thoughts overall? Did you like this? Yeah, I mean, I really enjoyed it. Um, I felt like it was a well done mystery movie, which is hard to do. I think that uh, making it entertaining, making it logical, all of that I think is well done. The characters are well written. It's also very visually appealing. Like it's oh, got totally. good visuals. I really like the house that's featured, the glass onion. Onions have layers. It's great. Like all of that is wonderful. Um, yeah. really enjoyed it. What about you? Yeah, no, I like overall this was fantastic. Like we both really, really liked Knives Out. Uh, uh, we've watched that several times. It's probably one of my favorites, in all honesty. Yeah, and, it's up there. Yeah, and I feel like this uh, this definitely like lives up as a sequel. Like uh, Ryan Johnson did a fantastic job on this whole thing. Uh, all the characters are just great. Uh, Daniel Craig does a fantastic job in his return. Yeah, I super liked this a lot. I would highly, highly recommend yeah. it. So, tell me about this story, babe. What what is going on? Okay. How does it start? How does it start? I won't, I'll, I'll try to remember and not, not give too much away. Um, but we start out with a group of friends. We have a, a, go a governor. We have a, like, wealthy influencer. Mm -hmm. We have a um, men's rights Twitch streamer. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, <laughs> the, the character by Dave Batista is something else. It's he is, something else. <laughs> like, the portrayal is great. It is just this raging, like, sausage testosterone yeah. man yeah. <laughs> that was always, like, packing a gun at any given point. Yeah. It is a good night. That is a funny character. Um. So, uh, we have uh, also Lionel, which is the... Uh, scientist he works for a, ma a man named miles braun and uh miles braun is kind of the the center of this group and he sends an invitation to all of them to come join him for a weekend they do this once a year basically it's set up to be a murder mystery party benoit blanc also uh comes along and uh so does uh miles braun's former business partner andy brand 
And uh, things don't go as planned. I think I'm going to leave it at that. Yeah. But that's kind of the setup. They're all on this giant island um, at his private island with this giant house called the Glass Onion. Mm -hmm. Um, Very extravagant. Yeah. So (laughs) I'd say Cyrus is definitely more the architecture nerd than I am, even though I've been like (laughs) doing architecture for longer. You definitely made that your passion. Um, do you want to tell them about the house? I think that's a really cool feature of it. Yeah, no, the the place, it's kind of like the same as the previous Knives Out movie. So there's just this one location. This time they are out in an island in Greece, uh, which is where this, uh, you know, billionaire lives, this tech billionaire. Um, he's called it the Glass Onion. It is just this very large, like, Greece villa, lots of modern type architecture but it's all adorned by this ginormous glass dome on the top um which also houses his uh lamborghini as well (laughs) was it a porsche oh it is a porsche yeah just on a rotating pedestal outside of this which i have which i think is like a good illustration for what wealth uber wealthy people do to good architecture like the glass onion itself good architecture i like i really I, I talked about this afterwards but i like the architecture of the the bottom house which is more minimalistic modern and it's got like some natural design plenty of gardens and vines mm-hmm. and a really cool feel mm-hmm. i like that separate from the glass top to the house yeah um but together they're not so great but what yeah. makes it even worse is that he's got this pedestal on top of the roof with the car that i feel like just ruins the aesthetic and the same <laughs> thing on the inside he's got all of these like highly coveted uh paintings well like very fine art mixed with a bunch of trash art and like he's got just plastered everywhere no like no elegance to the design Mm -hmm. and so like i think that that's actually a very good commentary on like what the uber wealthy do like they don't they have the money to to possess all these things but they don't know what to do with it when they have it you know what i mean you know what i liked about this movie too is that uh it takes place firmly in 2020 as yeah, in may 2020 yeah as in it is taking place in the pandemic people are wearing masks uh, uh up until they get to this island mm-hmm. and everything and like it's it's interesting because it doesn't feel like too many uh stories have been tackling the pandemic mm-hmm. like that most have just like not acknowledged it but here it is front and center for a bit right there in front even with uh even with daniel craig as benoit blanc um playing and failing miserably at a game of among us yeah i like i like the uh the capturing of that era i mean that's that's weird to say an era it was just like last year but Mm -hmm. um i think the pandemic had a very specific feel very specific games were played a lot of stuff was very popular and they did a good job of capturing Kind of a that pandemic time culture. Yeah, yeah, it was really it was really interesting. I thought that that was really well done without overdoing it. You so, know? real quick, uh, how, as far as the structure of the mystery, mm-hmm. how soon do you feel you were able to solve that mystery of the glass onion? Onion! So, I had two theories. Yeah, and... I remember you leaning over in the theater and being like, I have a couple theories. So, I had two theories. I eliminated one very fast. And then the second one was confirmed before anyone died. So first act of the movie, first like 30 minutes, I had I had the solution. I didn't have all the facts, but I knew who was involved. Um, well, that's kind of the double-edged sword of this movie is if you pay attention hard enough, you can figure it out. You can't. It's very easy to figure out. But that's what I like about it. I like uh-huh. the fact... I think well-written mysteries are logical enough and they give you enough information so that you can solve it yourself if you pay attention. And I think that's a hallmark of a really good writing because it means that the solution was there the whole time. It was logical. And if you didn't get it by the end of the movie, you can rewatch it and go, oh, I missed that. Oh, that was so obvious. Yeah, da, da, da. Yeah. You know, I think that that's actually a sign of a good writer rather than it just being out of left field. There's no way to make that connection. I feel like that's kind of cheap. Yeah. So that was kind of my experience. I feel like it was still very enjoyable for me. But we decided when I, when I leaned over to you and said I have a th- Two theories, and then I told you, no, I know what's going on. Uh-huh. Um, we decided that I wasn't going to tell you. Usually, when we watch a mystery movie together, I will like let you in on my 
goings on, what's what I'm thinking, yeah. all that. This time, I was so sure I had it. I was like, I don't want to ruin it for him. So I didn't tell you uh-huh. any of my theories. So I want to know what your like viewing experience was without like having that figured yeah, out. Yeah, well, I'm kind of uh, a little bit more of a smooth-brained person. So when it comes <laughs> to a mystery movie, I'm not trying to solve this thing. I'm just sitting back and letting it unravel in front of me. Like, I, I try to follow some threads here and there, but I am, I am not good at this kind of stuff. Regardless of that, though... Uh, it's it was still really good. Like it, there was a lot to hold on to to keep myself interested in. I had kind of a couple theories of my own that they did not pan out. Um, but yeah, and the, I think the final the final solution is I think it's very satisfying. Yeah, yeah. I think so too. And I think it does well. Um, uh, you you feel like in the first act that like you are moving so so fast through this and. You, you don't know what's going on. Mm-hmm. And then it does a really good job of having you go back through the story and finding more pieces and putting things in context and d- kind of rediscovering what you've already watched. And I thought that was a really unique way of, of telling that story. Yeah. And, I, man, I wish there there's, like, certain things that I want to talk about, but I think it'd be best not to. Yeah. Um, this is a movie that you should really... It, it's a cliche to say, but, you know, go in blind, check it out, and then talk about it with your friends. Yeah, it's, and if, if you just fun. sit there and you don't figure out the mystery, like, that is probably more enjoyable. I still enjoyed it, figuring it out, but mm-hmm. I also read just tons of Agatha yeah. Christie. And so, just, like, the mystery genre is... You got it unlocked. <laughs> <laughs> the... <laughs> it's the... Surprises are rare, I'd yeah. say. So, but go in, just enjoy it. It's really well made. The actors did a wonderful job. I just want to point out Catherine Hahn's performance um, as the governor was just like top notch. Uh, yeah. She had me, she had me hooked. It was yeah, really good. Janelle Monet was uh, the kind of female lead in this movie as well. Uh, I did not know that she acted. Because I, I always thought of her as like a musician. I don't know who Janelle Monae oh, okay. is, so, so I can't help I you there. I think I know her as a musician. Okay. And this was cool. I don't, I'm don't. i not familiar with much of her work, but she did great. This was awesome. It's really weird to see Dave Bartista without makeup all over you his... You Darv Bartista? Darv Bartista. <laughs> <laughs> Darv. Yeah. Uh, little Darv over there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, just a very tattooed person. Just... Yeah. Is that, that... That's real, right? Like, they didn't... I have no idea. I mean, yeah. I don't think he has the Drax tattoos, if that's what you're thinking. What? You think he has all those Drax tattoos all over no, himself? No, I'm saying it's weird to not see him with the Drax tattoos. Oh, okay. I thought you thought he had, like, all that henna stuff on him all the no, time. But but no, but I'm just saying, like, I'm talking about he was very tattooed in the movie, and I'm wondering if that was that added on as a persona, or is Dave Bartista the man tattooed that heavily? That's a good question. Yeah. We'll have to Google it. We'll have to Google it. Yeah. Anyway... You know what? Um, That'll be our follow-up on the next episode. We'll do a, We'll do a corner that's devoted to Dave Batista or Bartista, as you like to say. Is it? It's Batista. What am I saying? I think you're saying, like, like barista, almost. Bartista? Or, like, Bartista. Oh, I am saying Bartista. It doesn't matter. I just thought it was kind of cute. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know. Uh, Here's you going into, uh, like, any mystery. First, discombobulate. <laughs> Right? Yeah. Yeah. You got yeah. it figured out. You're going the slow mo Sherlock in any mystery. You you're kind of. I'm not this a apart. big fan of that, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm gonna like, that's when I get into my critique of the mystery genre and Sherlock Holmes movies. That'll take forever. Okay, that's a podcast for another day. Okay, yeah. so but like overall, uh, how many how many onions oh. out of ten would you give it? Oh, um, out of ten, would you give ten onions? Yeah, bad. ten onions. <laughs> that's a lot of onions. Uh, I mean, it's like a normal bundle, I think, like at I'm the gonna, grocery store. I'm going to give her nine onions. You're going to give it nine onions? I'm going to give her a full three-pound bag of onions. Okay, she's giving it nine onions. Onions have layers. I think that was nine. I think that was seven. Okay. Onion, onions have there we go. I might have just given it a 12. We'll find out. <laughs> All right. Well, um, uh, what about you? How do you how do you land on it? Yeah, man, I have a real soft spot for for this series. Um, yeah, good mystery. It was. I, I meant to say it was also super funny. This one, yeah. just like the last one, very very comedic. Uh, yeah, I think I, I would agree with the. Nine, I'd almost give it 10 onions. I'm gonna give it 10 onions. I just like this 
I just like knives yeah. out. I yeah. just like this stuff. Okay, that's five. Imagine times two. Onions have layer. See, I knew I knew ten was too much. I knew you couldn't keep track of ten. That's why I was like, let's do five. I knew you're like, no, I'm committed to doing the joke of having ten onions in there. Yeah, uh, it was it was a bit too much for me. Okay, we're but, switching uh, to the five system. I would give it four. You would give it five. Let's just put it for consistency I think throughout I could find this episode. A, a snappier sound effect. I could do like out of twenty. Oh. Even. My goodness, you get tired pressing that button <laughs> just five times. I, I see was it pressing it with my thumb, getting ooze all over no, the keyboard. Girl, yeah. oh, oh. That was a bad choice. All right. So on that lovely note, uh, let's switch to talking about a TV show. Now, we finally, finally, finally caught up with watching Andor. It's been out for a minute. We were uh, piggybacking off of my brother's Disney Plus subscription, mm. and they canceled right as the series is getting going. We're calling them out right we're now. We're calling them out. You should have re Bring back Disney Plus. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're just... This new, series, this new uh, section of our podcast is Family Disputes. Yeah. <laughs> where well, we air our grievances. He, here's the thing. I feel like we're probably the leeches on the subscription services. Like, we definitely are. <laughs> like, I think yeah. my dad pays for the Netflix. They paid for Disney Plus and Peacock. Um, and we thank you for that. Uh, right. For and then services. we get all of that. We we do provide Hulu for them because we have yeah. Spotify. And then, like, occasionally we get Discovery Plus and for, like, a week. And we hand out the passwords for just, like, if you want to watch something, watch it now. We're canceling. <laughs> 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 or we watch those subscriptions like a hawk. You yeah. ain't getting extra money out of us. No, <laughs> no. I mean, we have, we have let it. HBO la- uh, Max has gotten us a few times where we've Dang let it, HBO. we've let it lapse. <sighs> no. Yeah. Um, but anyway, sorry. Moving back to Andor. What we watched you, Andor. We watched it. Wait, I know you're dying to tell us about it. So go right into your thoughts. Yeah, uh, just our initial thoughts before kind of getting into the story and everything. Man, I think. Personally, this is kind of probably my favorite Star Wars thing in a long time, probably ever since uh, Episode Eight. I would say ever since the Last Jedi. And, and we know Episode Eight is hotly contended. Do not bring that into our comment no, section. Yeah. We will not entertain no. Episode Eight slander. This is we are very pro Rain Johnson. Uh, yeah. In the Knives Out, in the Episode Eight, to all of you who don't like it. <laughs> Yeah, that's what you get. That's your one fart for this. That's whole. the one I get. That's the one you okay. get. I hope you're happy with it. Okay, sounds good. So, oh, I <laughs> sorry, I leaned on, leaned on the keyboard. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, no, I thought this was really, really good. My goodness, like it kind of just captivates you from the first episode and just kind of keeps going. Um, a lot of people really want a mature feeling Star Wars show, and this certainly delivers. I, I personally have am of the mindset of Star Wars can really tonally just be just about anything you want. I think it works on a lot of different levels, but it's, uh, this definitely delivers on a very good story with, um, also bringing forward as I'll probably discuss later, a lot of boring elements, but those boring elements kind of make it all the greater. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? I think like I, I'm really happy that there's finally, a Star Wars something that's not simply fan service. Like oh, I yeah. feel like I've watched like several things that are just fan service and almost just like hashtags. Like we uh, skipping ahead at the end of this, we were like, okay, now we've got to rewatch Rogue One, make sure that this totally makes sense. Rogue One, there's just so much of Jin Erso going rebellions they're built on hope we must have hope hope is the only thing that's it's just ridiculous the writing in andor is so good um i love this the story i actually really enjoy this i'm not a big i like star wars but i'm not Mm -hmm. a huge star wars okay i take that back i play a lot of star wars games yeah you do Um, (laughs) you can't deny it it's all over you babe um but no, I thought that this was uh, solid all the way around. Visually, stories, characters are very w- well fleshed out. Mm-hmm. Way better than Rogue One. You actually find out who Cassian Andor is and everybody's motivations and yeah. the obstacles they face are really interesting. Um, mm-hmm. Very solid show. Yeah. I, we kind of skipped like um, 
Should we go through like a story, like the synopsis? Yeah, I was thinking about I'm general sorry. thoughts and then synopsis. I I screwed up the format. Usually we do synopsis <laughs> first, but I'm assuming I'm assuming you watched Andor, which is probably not fair. But all right, let's look at a synopsis. I'm sorry. Okay, uh, so there's not a good synopsis. Um, I, I, look- I can kind of. I can kind of okay so we'll we'll try our best to sum it up we're we pulled up a wikipedia because we want to you know give you the facts this wikipedia was not well made so generally what you're looking at here is obviously the prequel to rogue one you're specifically looking at cassian andor and his adventures so this is post episode three Mm -hmm. pre-episode four yeah pre-rogue one and in the timeline i think it's however long that is and it's it could be a year it could be and it poss- many years. It possibly is congruent with Obi Wan. We don't really know, right? Yeah, yeah. I don't know all these in between in betweenquels that I'm calling them. No, they gave it. They gave us at the very first episode, like the very first scene. They give you a date. They do, yeah. So oh. I guess like Star Wars, like if you're really into it, you could probably figure out exactly what because it is the, the date they give you is like a single digit, and it's. The acronym stands for Before the Battle of Yavin, so it's like something something BBY. They right. do give you that. You All don't right. remember that? I don't understand the dates in Star Wars. I don't know what it, <laughs> that it meant before the Battle it of Yavin. It doesn't matter. It'll all be out of canon in 10 years. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so basically uh, what kind of happens is you follow Cassian in this really, you know, dark, rainy town. He ends up at a bar and he is looking for a woman who we later find out he is looking for his uh, older sister, I believe. Yeah. Um, so trying to find her, he bumps into a couple of Empire goons that are technically... I'm sorry. But see, you say you're not into Star Wars and you want to throw in the technicals. So, I see you. So All right. They're not Empire goons. Um, technically. They are private security goons. Remember? Technically. Technically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they are. It's a, you're right. You're right. Uh, so they're they're not stormtroopers or anything. They're like this planet is contr- is like basically been contracted out to a security company mm-hmm. and so he kills two security officers. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, they, they bump into him, they get all angry, they follow him, and it looks like they're going to try and kill him. He offs them and becomes, uh, yeah, kind of a fugitive. A fugitive. So goes back to his old home planet. He's hiding from the Empire. Eventually he uh, finds his way into uh, the Rebellion um, and does a little mission for them, uh, breaking into a uh, Empire. It's kind of like this... It's this bunker, kind of like a dam, almost. Uh, yeah. Yeah, which that that in itself is a really cool episode. It's basically, yeah, his adventures of how how did Cassian join the rebellion is kind of the answer yeah. that's uh, or the question that's answered at the very and, end. And we also follow. Uh, I'm gonna call her Mothra, which is not right, but <laughs> <laughs> I know the that's, famous I, Godzilla character. <laughs> is it Mon Mon Monra? What is it? <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, it's not mom. Pull, it's mom. The, the AMGB. <laughs> okay. We had that available to us. We could have been it's... saying this much better, and we're not. It's Mon Moth. No, it's not. Mon Mothma? Where is the Where is she? I can't find. Oh, Mothma. there it is. Mothma. Okay. Mon Mothma. So yeah. we also follow her. Everyone knows Mon Mothma from well, Star Wars. Okay. Think episode four. Uh, many Bothans have died to bring us this information. That's Mon Mothma. <laughs> Technically. Uh, technically. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we follow her uh, kind of story as she is struggling to remain a senator, but also secretly supporting the rebellion. Um, yeah. We and- get more of Saw Gerrera, who is kind of a rebellion extremist. We see him in Rogue One. We learn nothing about him in Rogue One, and he dies in like two seconds Mm -hmm. and so it's really nice to actually know who the person who died in rogue one is you know what i mean like yeah forrest whitaker gets a lot more time here and gets a much more interesting character uh yeah and it's it was kind of cool because the again uh, it's mothra we're just gonna say mothra (laughs) the mothra stuff is great because it's essentially following her and her whole storyline is how she is basically bankrolling the rebellion. So she is secretly trying to just move money around so that the empire doesn't notice that she's moving money around. So she kind of has to go to some 
sometimes to some shady people to get this money moved. And that's a lot of what she's doing is like faking to be this, you know, senator who's taking on, you know, small, you know, small potatoes uh, at the Senate, but secretly running the rebellion. And it's kind of a really cool story. I, I like her stuff a lot. Yeah, I think that's something that we you really appreciated and so did I is that um, it covers like a lot of different we're following a lot of different characters in a lot of different positions. We're not just following like the uh, the aka heroes, you know, Cassie and Andor. Mm-hmm. We're also following um, Imperial uh, ISB, which is like their intelligence service. Yeah. Um, uh, Imperial intelligence. Um, mm-hmm. We're following uh, the investigator who initially got the case when he murdered the security guards. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, we're following oh, man. like he does a good job too. Yeah, we're That's following his story. his friends from back home. What's going on in his home planet of Ferrix? And then we're following like some lower level rebellion troops um, as they follow their missions. And something that it really does a good job is is covering all those fronts, but also showing that war is very very morally gray. And yeah. both it- sides do things that are not okay you know oh, yeah totally it's kind of that thing that uh again in episode eight that they were talking about when it came to you know the that guy they broke out of jail in episode eight and he's kind of talking about you know where are all these ships coming from on each side well mm-hmm. they're all coming from the same people you know you got to buy your ships somewhere uh and that this kind of takes that same approach of like yeah the empire is doing bad things but the rebellion also has to get its hands dirty every now and then to actually achieve what they want, and it kind of sits on those moments uh, a bit, and it shows how all of those moments affect all of these new characters that they've introduced. And it's it's cool because there's so many new characters, but it gives them so much time to mm-hmm. breathe that you do really end up caring for all of them. Yeah. I, I want to just go back real quick. When I say morally great, it's not okay. I don't mean like, oh, that's a questionable decision. <laughs> like, no, they do bad things. Yeah. War is bad. Let me just state that. So frankly. let me get this straight. You're, uh, <laughs> you're anti-war. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yes. You feel brave enough to say that on this podcast? <laughs> yes. Okay. Me too. <laughs> Um, We're yeah. taking strong stances today. Really? <laughs> We're really going out there And today. guess what? If you're pro-war, <laughs> yeah. I told... We're going to go to war over this fart button. <laughs> I'm taking it off the board. So you don't want me to fart at pro-war people now? <laughs> no! Wow. wow. No! No! Does that answer your question? Okay. It does. Um, yeah, I think the, the character development is really great. Oh, uh, we do have to talk about some of the visuals because oh, uh, yeah. there's some really cool stuff. There is particularly a scene. Uh, let's see. I need to pull up that episode real fast. It is episode six called The Eye. Basically, what you're seeing is this really amazing like celestial phenomenon going on. And there's this one scene where they hold on uh, this guy who's boarding his TIE fighter and Man, that is such a gorgeous it's, it's cool. scene. I wish, like, they... I know that they were... It was an action scene. They had to move fast. But I wish they just had, could linger on those effects for forever. But there's, like... Forever. S- there's so much stuff like that. There's so many, like, pretty locations. You can tell that they were using just so many practical effects uh, through and through. Yes. So, that was a big thing I was really happy with, is the practical effects, the practical aliens and prosthetics and all of that Mm -hmm. but another thing was that they um kept like a lot of the analog stuff so it really feels like honestly if if you timeline the episode it feels more like four five and six than it does one two and three like Mm -hmm. it's less shiny it's more grimy everything is everything's greasy everything's greasy (laughs) like one of the characters anytime she like switches from being like a rich girl to being a rebel spy just rubs dirt on her face. It's so funny. Pay attention <laughs> yeah. to that. Um, but everything feels very much like episode four. Everything's analog. The screens are really old hat. Mm-hmm. It's really cool. I liked it. I, I noticed like they kept the microphones from episode six in the like Empire Bunker. They kept the cameras from episode four and five, six. Like, Mm-hmm. Like it was spot on, and I just really appreciated that attention to detail. And that was a lot of the strengths in the Rogue One movie was that attention to detail and having like this, you know, like those consoles that you have in the Death Star, and they all just have like it's a 
it's a Death Star, but it's apparently operated on just like three buttons by this one guy. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you know, all that kind of stuff. The, With no label, just push the red button. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, you know, very analog looking. Um, it's great. It's really good. Um, I have to say, I think too, this show, la- I think it's the last episode, has my favorite ship in all of Star oh, Wars. Oh, yeah, that ship Okay, is here comes cool. a minor spoiler for you, but this ship is fantastic. It basically has a little onboard, a uh, little droid man who, you know, he's... It's like a camera. It's like almost yeah. like if your doorbell camera was a robot. I should not robot. say man. It's a little ball thing, basically. <laughs> it's like your, your blink doorbell became a a robot on a ship. That's <laughs> yeah, it. it's very, I guess that's minimal, but where this really stands out is this person fleeing the Empire decides to engage on each side of his ship lightsabers. Yeah. Just two, they, I'm sure they're not really lightsabers, but he basically uses lightsabers yeah. and cuts a couple other ships in half and it's really cool. It's really cool. It was, <laughs> I was just like, why haven't we seen that before? Why has that not ever been yeah. a thing in Star Wars? Why aren't we putting lightsabers on more things? Yeah, <laughs> just is, tape a lightsaber yeah. to it. It's so smart. Exactly. Um, Put yeah, a lightsaber which, on the spokes of your bicycle. Just wheel yeah. around. Which I I don't know if this is a spoiler, but there is no Jedi's in no, uh, yeah, in Andor, um, which is kind of nice. It's I mean I uh-huh. I could have seen where they could have maybe done like a Jedi in hiding or whatever you know, mm-hmm. but they didn't. They held with restraint and kept the story about other things, and I kind of liked it. I was yeah like, yeah yeah. Uh, I mean, how many onions would you give this one? you reckon mm. out of what are we doing five how high can i count on one hand let's mm. do that <laughs> well don't use the hand that you severed your finger yeah i can't do that um it's oozing again i'm gonna give it barring a rewatch because i think rewatches expose the cracks i'm gonna give it a five a five onion 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 that's good hang on you gotta hold it so they hear everything Onions have layers. The, there we go. the last one has to be full. You can't <laughs> okay, just do the sounds onion. good. So you give it a five. I give it a five. Yeah, I think I would very much agree with that. Um, I'd give Andor a two. I mean, I'd give Rogue One like a two, though. Oh, Rogue One can. <laughs> <laughs> it was not. It was not as can good as I thought. Suck the little water out of our garbage can. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it gets uh, it gets two onions. Onion. On- so. I just hold I'm, on. I need to give my five though to oh, yeah, yeah. Andor because okay, okay, Andor yeah. deserves five. Uh, on, 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 on. Just pretend it was the whole thing. You get the point. Okay. It's a good show. You should watch it. Rogue One makes no sense. No. <laughs> it the decisions that are made by people no! and the. Good. What were you what saying? What was that? No. Oh. Okay. I just pitched it up. <laughs> okay. What were you saying? <laughs> Well, now I forgot. I Thank you. To, I'm sorry. I was trying to hype you up. Well, the Why hype not? has destroyed, has derailed my train. No, it, it like the, the decisions that are made by characters make no sense. We don't get any time to develop uh, any uh, feelings towards the characters. So when eventually they die, it's just like, okay, it's fine. Whatever. The dialogue is terrible. The it's kind of pretty. I see what they were trying to do with like a war movie and like, but it it didn't hit the right notes for me. I, it's for me the worst thing we've ever done with. Okay, I take that back. Episode nine. I I really like Star Wars as uh-huh. as, as as I'm revealing about Technically. myself. Technically, um, I could not finish episode nine i haven't watched it all the way through yet i gave up i got bored mm-hmm. so i think that takes the bottom of the rung and then rogue run is sitting pretty on top and of that. the thing is like we've rewatched rogue one i think probably about a couple times each now uh have you at least i have and i think the thing is like once you see andor it really kind of makes you see the missed potential of rogue one mm-hmm. like rogue one that could have been a really cool TV series if that's what Disney was, you know, going to do back in the day. Uh, but the like Andor it needed just the length, yeah, it needed the time. Yeah, it's it's definitely it has good moments for sure. There is some fun to be had with it, but yeah, just watch Andor. It'll yeah. make you happy. Yeah, just watch it. Yeah. 
Five onions. All Tell right, your friends. What is next on our agenda? I've completely forgotten. Oh, we have. Oh, I know what's up. All right. Uh, we're very excited today. Um, instead of a sponsorship, we've accepted a public service announcement. Um, and Cyrus is going to bring us into that. When you're thinking about giving gifts, why not give your loved ones the gift of knowledge? Knowledge like how to ride a bike, how to make meaningful friendships, or perhaps, most importantly of all, how to identify the powerful and addictive stimulant drug known as methamphetamine, also going by its street name, meth. This year, the Board of Eastern Kentucky Medical Health is raising awareness on how to avoid this ongoing threat to our communities. If anyone, and we mean anyone, your father, your mother, your friend, your cousin, your step-uncle, your priest, your rabbi, your teacher, comes up to you and offers fancy-looking crystals or a powder that looks similar to Parmesan cheese but does not smell stinky, look them dead in the eyes and simply say, don't meth with me and walk away. Okay, relate a time when you rejected meth from someone you trusted. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so we, we've got meth stories, right? About when we've rejected I meth. I do. Let me tell you. Yeah. Uh, this, this issue has become near and dear to my heart. We mm -hmm. went out to eat. We went to a respectable restaurant. We went to um, Beatty's, which is like a, an a open grill thing. And they have yeah. some really bomb... Uh, what is margaritas? No, I wasn't ordering a margarita. Was no, you were ordering a mojito. Mojitos, yes. Yeah. So I was ordering a mojito. Um, I wasn't looking for anything beyond just a mojito. And the waiter has the gall to look at me and say, do you want meth with that? And so I... Wait, I he said that? Yeah. Do you not remember? You were with me. And then I got up. I like said, I said directly to him, I quoted it. I said, don't mess with me. And I walked away, and we left the restaurant. You don't remember that? No, I remember that very distinctly. Okay, okay, this is making more sense now. He off he he was offering you mint, mint, mint with your mojito. He said, "Do you want mint?" Uh... That's what. That is that why you? Oh, that's why you walked away. Yeah, I. Oh, uh, okay. Oh boy. So, okay. So given that, I, I don't have any meth stories, okay. I guess, actually. Yeah, well, okay, our bad. Our bad. Uh, uh, so, well, I've I, got a... okay. I, but I, I genuinely thought he was offering me meth, and I, I stood up for myself. I think that that, even though I was mistaken and I shouldn't have just written scriptures on his receipt instead of tipping him, um, oh, yeah. then, <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I guess, I guess I owe that waiter an apology, but... Um, I still think it's a good example of what you can do if faced with meth. But I know you have you have stories. Yeah, so uh, my story for, you know, the, this it was more of an indirect way that I was offered meth. So the other day I'm going out to the bank. I okay. roll up. I just need to get, you know, just some quick cash. So I, I go up to the teller. But wouldn't you know it, when I get there, in a bowl, on the reception desk just full of meth that bowl just full of meth all wrapped up and everything i i could not believe it that really? was insane yeah no way. i'm looking at that and you know there's a kid behind me like oh, a family yeah. with a kid behind me and i'm like i can't this could, anyone could grab this uh -huh. i asked the teller about it um and she even told me like the brand the brand of meth really? that the bank was giving out yeah it was like uh Something like jaundice ranchers or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, no, I've heard of it. That's gnarly That's stuff. That's bad stuff. Yeah. Uh, so I look at her and I'm just like, no, this isn't happening. So I, I flipped the bowl. I looked the kid straight in the eye. I told him, get out of here. I looked back at the receptionist and I said, you don't meth with us. And I walked away. <laughs> Way to go. That was awesome. Proud of you. Um, we do have uh, another note uh, from the TSA. Uh, it says, uh, it has come to the attention that the Board of Meth, uh, that meth might also take on a bluish color. Um, until the board can confirm this with 100% accuracy, this detail is uh, accuracy. Please avoid all blue, bluish colored objects. Uh, thank you for your consideration. This year, take a stand against methamphetamines. Don't get methed with. 
Together we will not let anyone or anything meth with us. That is from the Don't Meth With Us campaign for 2022. And thank you for sponsoring this episode. We're really proud of uh, being able to give our voice to this important issue. Yeah. Should we talk about what we've been gaming? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do it. We, we need to come up with a name for this segment. Yeah, we do. Uh, what should we call it? My brain immediately goes to let's game it out, but that's taken by Grace Still Play, so I shouldn't. <laughs> um, um, okay, we'll call it uh, pending game name. section. <laughs> pending game <laughs> section. Oh, we, we call our, when we play together, team players. So, yeah, like maybe it's t- team players. The podcast. Team players talk it out. Okay. We'll, May- we'll, 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 we'll workshop it. We'll, let's he workshop doesn't it. like it. I don't okay. like it. <laughs> Okay, I'm taking the board away from you. (laughs) You like that? I love it. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, so let's talk about what we've been playing. Uh, First of all, you have a game that you have downloaded. Uh, It's it's called A Little to the Left. Is that right? A Little to the Left. Um, It is such a cozy game. So basically the premise of the game, it's very simple. You are basically solving puzzles, but these puzzles take the form of just like straightening household objects or organizing like very messy drawers i love it it was i i went through it pretty fast i think there's like 40 something puzzles and they all Mm -hmm. some of them have multiple ways you can solve them which is nice you can go back and replay but if you're looking for something cozy and chill and something you can listen to a podcast and play i really i really dug it um i played the demo first and um, upon playing that, I was really excited for the release, and when it came out, I I got it right away. Cause... You had me play a couple of like the highlights yeah. of those uh, of those puzzles. It yeah. was fun. There's one where you have to like, I don't know, I don't know if garages are like this anymore, but my garage was growing up. We never used this system, but you, like it's like a a board with a bunch of holes in it, and then yeah. you have like nails or something that hold different objects up. So there's this one puzzle where you have to fit all of these tools onto this board perfectly. Like, everything has to, like, align and fit. And it it's just... It has to be a perfect little square, and yeah. you have, like... It's so satisfying. You have to put up a hacksaw. You have to put up a uh, wrench. Yeah, it's just a lot of, you know, different little, like, gardening and shed-type things. It's It was nice. Yeah, it's uber satisfying. Uh, and then the last level level is really nice. It's kind of a fluid level where... You solve one puzzle and it merges into another and it merges into another and it's really ap- appealing. I don't know I, if you like satisfying games, if you like puzzles, um, I definitely recommend it. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's on uh, Steam, but I think it's it might be also on the Switch, maybe. I think it's coming. It might be coming to the Switch. It's not there yet. At okay, least. gotcha. Yeah, uh, but it's on Steam. Uh, I think it's like fifteen bucks. So it, it, I think it's a, a decent investment yeah. to. to Good little indie game. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. All right. Um, um, I've you got- have really good news. Um, we, <laughs> yes. we talked to you guys last time that, that Cyrus was preparing for a Smash Brothers tournament. Mm-hmm. Um, that happened, what, like a month ago? I think it's been a month now, yeah. Almost a month. Uh-huh. Um, do you want to tell us what, what the goings on were? What was the vibe? What happened? Give us the details. Okay. So, yeah, I had been preparing for this thing for a bit. And, it, like, I was kind of concerned because I got invited to this thing amongst friends, um, and I was kind of worried because I, for a month, I was really putting in work, like, really practicing at this game <laughs> to try and give it my all. And I had this moment where I'm like, man, am I the only person taking it this seriously? Am I gonna, he, he like... was so anxious about that. Like, yeah. every couple of days, he'd be like, I think I'm going to ruin it. Yeah. I think I'm going to ruin this tournament because I'm taking it too seriously. Mm-hmm. And then when I got there... Um, rest assured it was it was nice everybody else had also obviously been practicing because man it ended up being a very fun tournament uh we had i think about uh 10 or 12 people actually in the tournament so we had a little bracket system going on uh it was really cool so our buddy uh uh, had his TV set up, but also his wife had made these two Joy Cons on the side of the TV, <laughs> just out of like cardboard and everything. So it had a nice aesthetic. We were playing for a trophy that someone had made. It was only like about 
you know, four inches tall or something. And then we had, someone else had this uh, paper, like, kind of uh, wrestling belt, like championships would win and everything. No. So we had that. That's what was all on the line and everything. You know, made some food. Uh, you know, it was, and it was a really fun night. I ended up... Uh, let's see working my way through the bracket and then losing i played two games that i won and then lost a match uh, and then i went into the losers bracket played through that until i got back into the main bracket into the finals and then we ended up playing in the finals me and maverick and then he ended up beating me oh i thought it was preston no it was maverick oh okay yeah yeah so he ended up, I was playing as Joker, he was playing as Steve from Minecraft. Uh, it was a super fun game, but he ended up coming out on top, but it was it was a blast. We yeah. had such a good I time. I second place, like that's pretty, pretty exciting. I'm excited, yeah. Cool. Yeah, and it was, it was such a good atmosphere too. Everybody, after every single match, it was all hugs and fist bumps and like, oh bro, you did so good here and there. It was, it was really fun, it was a good spirit. Uh, we had yeah. a good time. I wasn't I wasn't there in person. I was out shopping with my mom, but I was getting regular text updates, basically being like, "Oh, I'm such an underdog." Uh, everybody's <laughs> rooting for. I remember uh -huh. getting that text, and then like, "Sure, sure, you're the underdog." Uh -huh, <laughs> yeah. Uh <-huh." laughs> yeah. No, it was super fun. I'm looking forward to maybe doing it again sometime. It yeah. sounds like they like to do this kind of regularly, so I'll. I'll try to be number one next time. Yeah, take it to the top. <laughs> uh, speaking of weekend hangout situation, mm -hmm. um, recently you and your buddies have been really getting into board gaming. I mean, we've, we've yeah. kind of always been into board gaming. Yeah, totally. Um, we've been playing, uh, like, we, we were really into Catan there yeah. for a while, Settlers of Catan. That's a fun one. That's a good one. Yeah, we played, oh, we played Azul that one time which yeah, was super our fun. our friends have a good variety like they had that back to the future game like yeah. really interesting <laughs> board games and it's kind of opened up our world to the variety of board games the creativity the gameplay it's been really nice you even came up we have to cover that sometime your prototype of the board game that you came up with. Yeah, we were coming up with a Sonic the Hedgehog board game. Yeah, it's actually pretty cool. We, we have all the pieces and stuff. Um, we'd have to talk about that sometime. Yeah. But recently... And it feels like when we get into winter and fall, typically, that's, that's kind of when time. we all get in the mood again for board gaming. Yeah, it's I've been in, like, in a puzzling mood. Like, I really want to do a jigsaw, but all yeah. of our jigsaws are depressing. I got in a car accident. <laughs> I got in a car accident when we were engaged. And Cyrus sent me this jigsaw of, like, a gray building with, like, it was like a water dam. I don't know. It was so <laughs> depressing. <laughs> I couldn't even finish it. So, like, that's all our jigsaws. And you still I gotta married get some me new ones. regardless. Of course, yeah. Aww. I would do it. Wow. Maybe again. Maybe. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Who could say for sure? But sorry, back on topic. Uh -huh. Rant over. So basically, you guys were playing this game called Time Stories, right? Yeah, uh-huh. And uh, it seems like a real cool game, especially from, like, looking at it. But in order to keep playing it, you have to buy different story packs, which are, like, $30. Yeah. Uh, so uh -huh. that was going to rack up pretty soon. So what was your guys' solution to that? This is such a problem, too, with just board gaming nowadays, too, is, like, you have really, really fun games. And the only issue is that these board games are, like, $50 a pop or more. Yeah, or more. Like... Catan is 60, and then its mm -hmm. expansion is, like, what, 30, 40? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh, definitely. So that's what we ran into with this. We played Time Stories, had a great time. But, of course, to continue playing it, you need to, you know, pop in, like, 30 or 40 bucks every Which time. I feel like it's kind of a ripoff, because, like, with Catan, you don't need the expansions to keep playing. You can keep playing the base game Catan. But uh -huh. with Time Stories, it seems like it's a one-and-done thing. Like, once you've played through yeah, what it's, they provide, Yeah, basically, done. it's one story that you play through. Given it's a good story, and you do get a lot of time out of it. Like, we spent, like, six hours on that thing. It was fun, but... You know, and you get some friends together. Maybe you go splitsies on that. But regardless, uh, we found on the computer on Steam that we uh, we decided to download Tabletop Simulator, which was a nice little workaround for this because with this program, basically you just you know download it. Uh, you spend like I think it's normally like twenty bucks or something, uh, and then once you're there. 
basically you go onto the mods page on Steam where everybody is doing their different mods for the game and everybody just adds in all these different board games. So you, you pay for it once and suddenly you have Catan, you have Time Stories, you have all the Time Story expansions. So it's a really cool workaround, a really fun game. It's basically what it does is it just gives you a virtual table that you're at. Uh, you connect to a server with your friends and the, um, and the game will just set up the board for you and all that. And you just play through the board game like you normally would. You can pick up dice, pick up cards. You can communicate with your friends on Discord and all that. It's great. Yeah, so you played a game this weekend. Um, I kind of popped in and out watching. But, like, how was the gameplay? Because it looks really cool, just right off the bat. He said, like, it was a 3D model of a board. I'm thinking, like, you know, a dinky little infographic, like, uh -huh. sketch up type <laughs> thing. But, no, it's, like looks really nice what's the gameplay like different like is it difficult to have there's a little bit of a learning curve i think because it like although this program is fantastic it kind of uh is not the most intuitive thing like mm -hmm. trying to find the board games that you want to download at first is a little difficult not too difficult but it's it's not as easy as you may you know think initially but you know if you if you're having problems and you went and youtubed it you'd probably be fine uh, the other thing too is that like just getting used to the camera controls because you're in a 3D space with this table and board game in the middle, so you kind of have to get used to you know clicking and dragging with your mouse. It's like a you know left click is to select, but your right click is to kind of rotate the camera, and then mm. your middle click is to actually drag around and everything. Mm. So it, it kind of it, yeah, it, it takes a minute. It's a little clumsy at first, um, but yeah, once you get it going, once you have a nice board game going with your friends, it's it's a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah, we've been enjoying so, that. Uh, I guess we can parlay this into an open invitation to our listeners if you want to play a board game with us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Okay. Sound off in those comments. Let's play a game. Let's do it. Yeah. That would be really fun. I think. Um, I think that would be fun to kind of get my family together to do that because we used to oh, uh -huh. during the pandemic we would do uh what was that simulator card called it was like crazy oh, cards or something yeah and we would play card games online and, and zoom and that was really fun it's probably so. something a lot of people are familiar with especially after the pandemic yeah because we were all looking for virtual ways to hang out with each other and let's be honest it's kind of nicer sometimes to play a board game from the comfort of your own home with your wife bringing you fried chicken. Oh, you that was nice. <laughs> that was really nice. <laughs> but I think uh, I think that's a new, a nice new foray into the board gaming. I'm excited to see. Yeah. Uh, what other stuff we can we can come up with? Yeah, totally. Um, as a little, I think that's the end of our outline. As a preview for next week, Cyrus is gonna work on. Our theme song! I am? Yes, you are. Oh. Yeah. Can it be just stuff from the soundboard? No, it cannot be the fart noise. Please don't put the <laughs> fart noise. <laughs> okay. Um, so, oh my god. You weren't supposed to hear that. I did. <laughs> I did. Um, he's already come up with, I think, one option. And we're kind of thinking that maybe he comes up with a few more. And then yeah. we on our podcast pick one out for you guys and let you guys hear if all the options if and you've made it this far into the recording come join us uh, next time next time i'd say next week but lord knows we're not gonna do this <laughs> once a week <laughs> whenever the next one comes out when the inspiration hits yes. um we're also looking to have uh, maybe some guests here soon yeah. Um, also play some team players. We're finally getting our setup together to be able to do that. I say we. Cyrus is getting our setup <laughs> together <laughs> so that we can uh, do some uh, streaming, some yeah. video game streaming. Yeah, that'll be cool. Uh, yeah, it'll be really fun. Um, and this was really fun. I had this a good was, time. Yeah, yeah, me too. Uh, I don't know. Do we have a sign off? Not I really. don't remember. I probably have to make a sign off for us too. Yeah. Some good music. Yeah. Um, but for now, we'll just say bye bye.